woman's name is Sarah, and she is about to be executed by electrocution, because she killed her two-year-old son, and dismembered twelve girls, but sitting in the electric chair, she was not only not afraid, but also with a smile, the warden gave the execution order with tears in his eyes, everyone was mourning for this death row inmate, do you think it's strange? But this is a true story, sixteen years ago, there were many cases of missing girls in the area, then, the police received an anonymous phone call. The caller claimed to have seen Jacob from the town with the missing girl. The police quickly arrived at the scene, and after some searching, they dug up 12 dismembered girls in Jacob's yard, and found his two-year-old son missing as well. The police soon arrested Jacob, but he claimed that his wife Sarah was also involved. In the face of evidence, Sarah admitted to killing her son, but because their son's body had not been found, the two had been imprisoned for 16 years. Now they have finally been sentenced to death. 48 hours before the execution, the police dug up the skeleton of the 13th victim under the house of Sarah's mother. The detective suspects there may be more victims yet to be found. But he was running out of time. The teen went straight to Sarah's mother. He wants to investigate her motive for the murder. He asked her mother if she had been abused as a child. The mother hesitated. She took a moment to tell the two men that Sarah's father was a former soldier and that he had been very strict with his daughter since she was a child, but he never used violence against her, only kicked and punched herself. Fortunately, he died early. Then the man asked, did you make that anonymous phone call 16 years ago? She said it wasn't her, but she knew who it was. With that, she handed the two a letter she received this morning. Meanwhile, the detective came to the prison and met Sarah. She looked calm and open, not at all like a murderer. Then, they took Sarah to the interrogation room. A sudden cry of baby made Sarah turn around. Baby, you look great. This means our names will be together forever. It's a beautiful thing. Sarah instantly understood that this was an arrangement by the detective to see how she would react to not seeing her husband for 16 years. Just then, the detective received a call from his teammate. He relayed the contents of the letter on the spot. Mom, I know it's hard. What happened between us was not supposed to be such a mother-daughter relationship. But I want you to know that the person who means the most to me in this world is living in the best place possible right now. Sarah immediately lost her temper. It turned out that the letter was written by Sarah to her mother. The detective also understood that Sarah had never hurt those young girls, but the inspector still does not understand why she has to take this charge with her husband. Calm down Sarah finally told the truth. She felt that the girls' deaths were related to her own negligence, because she had seen her husband take the girls to the studio many times. The detective did not want Sarah to be sentenced to death just because she blamed herself. But when Sarah looked up, there was no desire for life in her eyes. Is she still hiding something? The only way to save him now was to find her missing son. He returned to his office and reviewed the video footage of the interrogation, hoping to find some useful clues. Suddenly, he noticed that Sarah treasured the three paintings she had made. Could it be that the secret she was hiding was hidden here? So, the detective took the three paintings and went to Sarah's interrogation room again. Sarah was very nervous. Three paintings in turn, respectively. The boy running to freedom, representing the longing of the river. Twelve roses symbolizing the murdered girl. But now the number of known victims is already 13. It means that Sarah does not know how many girls were killed. The detective couldn't understand why she insisted on lying. How old is your child? 25. Do you have a picture of him? In my office. You don't carry him with you. Never. To protect him, you want to leave him in somewhere safe, somewhere clean. The detective now understands that her son should not be dead. The team is interrogating Sarah's husband, Jacob. Jacob is a psychopath with an insane desire to control. He insisted that the 13th body was the last victim. So, the man deliberately calls his colleagues and lies that the governor has changed Sarah's sentence to probation. Jacob is instantly furious and he can't stand the thought of Sarah being out of his control. He told him where his son's body was buried. The police quickly dug up the body, but they were still fooled. It was the skeleton of the 14th girl victim. And now, 
Sarah is about to be his last victim. He wanted his wife to be with him. The detective didn't want to give up. He thought Sarah must have taken his son to a safe place before he was arrested. So he had his teammates check all the medical records and genetic reports from that time. But nothing came up that matched the records for the boy. With an hour to go, they were about to be electrocuted. Sarah was taken outside by the guards. She prayed to the moon one last time. The detective took this opportunity to go to the cell again. After a search, he finally found a brief on the back of the boy's portrait. By now it was time for Jacob to be electrocuted. The warden asked him if he needed to atone for his sins to God for peace of mind. Jacob, however, calmly said, I have redeemed myself 18 times, and each one was better than the previous. He just confessed to killing four more girls. There's nothing I can do. The air echoed with Jacob's screams. Sarah's tears fell along with her hair. A tragic fate had tied her to this pervert and she couldn't break free. The team didn't want to let Jacob get away with this. Before the impending execution, he took out a picture and stuck it on the glass. Jacob was not happy, but he could only fall into hell forever with a lot of resentment. But with only a photo, they could not find each other in a short time. The detective had to find Sarah again and tell her that Jacob was dead. Your child will no longer be threatened by anything. But Sarah replied with a smile on her face. The child is the best gift from God. She was not going to change her mind because she had already made that decision 16 years ago. The detective was anxious. He couldn't watch a good man take the blame and die. He told the warden that he had found her son, but the warden said the execution had to be carried out without an order from the governor. Sarah still insisted that she had killed her son. The detective had to ask Sarah one last time if she was sure she wanted to plead guilty. Sarah said she didn't want the child to know that his father was a murderer, so she was willing to die for the child. She said that the detective could save her son. On the other hand, they finally found the adoptive family of Sarah's son. They rushed to call the detective, but Sarah said to him, don't let my son become Jacob's last victim. The detective hugged Sarah. He finally understood the good intentions of a mother. The detective told his teammates with difficulty that they were mistaken and that the boy was not the one they were looking for. Sarah's eyes full of tears, but with a smile on her face, looking at the inspector. At the moment she was about to enter the torture chamber, she asked, hoping to see the inspector's face to leave this world. And so, Sarah sat peacefully in the electric chair with the sound of her son's cello in her mind. At the end of her life, she was lucky, because she had already protected the most important thing in the world for her. Albert Pine said what we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others in the world remains and is immortal.